Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel all about electronics. So in this video, we will learn how to find the Laplace transform of the periodic functions. So in the previous videos, we have seen that how to find the Laplace transform of the basic functions. And in that video, we have seen that how to find the Laplace transform of the sinusoidal functions. But during the circuit analysis, apart from the sinusoidal functions, we might come across the different periodic functions. So using the conventional method, sometimes it is difficult to do the circuit analysis. But using the Laplace transform, even for such periodic signals, it is possible to do the circuit analysis. So in this video, first of all, let us find out how to find the Laplace transform of the periodic functions. So once we know the Laplace transform of such periodic functions, then we can easily do the circuit analysis in the S domain. So first, let us find out the method for finding the Laplace transform of the periodic functions. So let's say we have some periodic functions x of t. So this function x of t can be represented as the time shifted versions of this x1t. That means here this x2t is same as the x1t but it is the time shifted by the one time period. Similarly, this x3t is the similar as the x1t but it is time shifted by the two time period. So if we do the summation of all these time shifted versions of the x1t, then we will get this function x of t. And here, this x1t is nothing but the x of t, which is gated over the interval 0 to t. So mathematically, this x1t is equal to x of t times this u of t minus u of t minus t. So here, this function represents the gated function over the interval 0 to t. So for those who do not know, First, let us understand how this function represents the gated function. So as you know, this u of t is the unit step function. And this u of t minus t is the time shifted unit step function. So basically, it is the unit step function, but it is time shifted by the t interval. So if we multiply this function by the minus 1, then this function will get flipped vertically. And now, if you do the summation of these two signals, then this portion and this portion of this unit step function will get cancelled out and eventually we will get this gated pulse. So when we multiply this gated pulse with this x of t then we will get this x1t. That means this x1t is nothing but the x of t over the interval 0 to t and out of this interval this function is equal to 0. That means if you do the addition of this time shifted versions of this x1t then we will get this x of t. So we can say that this x of t is equal to x1t plus x2t plus x3t plus so on. So mathematically, this x2 of t is nothing but the x1t minus t. And here, this u of t indicates that this function exists only for the t greater than or equal to 0. Similarly, this x3 of t is nothing but the x1t, but it is time shifted by the two time period. So we can say that that is equal to x1 of t minus 2t. And if we add all these time shifted versions of this x1t, then we will get this x of t. So now, let us take the Laplace transform of the h term. So the Laplace transform of this x of t will be equal to x of s. And similarly, let's say the Laplace transform of this function x1t is equal to x1 of s. So using the time shifting property of this Laplace transform, we can say that the Laplace transform of this x1 of t minus t is equal to e to the power minus t s times x1 of s. Because as you know, as per the time shifting property of the Laplace transform, the Laplace transform of the function x of t minus a is equal to e to the power minus a s times x of s. That means here, the Laplace transform of the function x1 of t minus t is equal to e to the power minus t s times x1 of s. And likewise, the Laplace transform of this function x1 of t minus 2t is equal to e to the power minus 2t s times x1 of s. And likewise, we will get the different terms. So in all these terms, as you can see, this x1 of s is common. So if we take it outside, then we can write it as 1 plus e to the power minus t s plus e to the power minus 2 ts plus so on. Now if you recall, then the summation of this series that is 1 plus x plus x square plus x cube plus so on is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus x. 
and this condition will be true when this x is less than 1. So in this case as you can see this x is equal to e to the power minus ts. So from this we can say that this series is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus e to the power minus ts. That means the Laplace transform of the periodic function x of t is equal to x1 of s divided by 1 minus e to the power minus ts where this x1 of s is the Laplace transform of the function x1t. And like I said, this x1t is same as the x of t, but it is defined over the interval 0 to t. That means if you want to find the Laplace transform of the periodic function x of t, then first we need to find the Laplace transform of that function over the first interval. And if we divide that Laplace transform by this exponential term, then we will get the Laplace transform of that periodic function. So let us take a couple of examples and through these examples, let us understand how to find the Laplace transform of the periodic functions. So let's say we want to find the Laplace transform of the half wave rectifier function. So as you are aware, in case of the half wave rectifier, when we apply the sinusoidal signal, then at the output, we will get only the positive half cycles. So for this periodic function, let us find the Laplace transform. And to find that, first of all, we need to find the Laplace transform of the function which is represented over the first interval. So first, let us see how to represent this function. So to get this function, we need to do the addition of these two sinusoidal signals. So here, this x of t is the sinusoidal signal. And the second signal is same as the first signal, but it is time shifted by the t by 2 time period. So now, when we add these two signals, then apart from this first half cycle, all the half cycles will get cancelled out. And because of that, eventually, we will get this particular function. So mathematically, this x1t is equal to sin omega t plus sin omega t minus t by 2. And here, this unit step function indicates that this function exists only for the t greater than or equal to 0. So now, in the previous videos, we have already seen the Laplace transform of this sin omega t. And that is equal to omega divided by s square plus omega square. And for the second term, using the time shifting property of the Laplace transform, we can easily find its Laplace transform. So that is equal to this exponential term that is e to the power minus t by 2 times s times omega divided by s square plus omega square. So further if we simplify it, then we can write it as this omega divided by s square plus omega square times 1 plus e to the power minus t by 2 times s. So that is the Laplace transform of the function x1t. So now once we get the Laplace transform of this function x1 of s, then we just need to divide it by this exponential term. And by doing so, we will get the Laplace transform of the periodic function. So here, since we are using this capital T as the time period for the sinusoidal signal, so here, to represent the time period of this periodic function, we are using the T dash. So this T dash represents the time period of the periodic function whose Laplace transform we are finding. So in case of the half wave rectifier, its time period is equal to T. So we can say that for this half wave rectifier, this T dash is equal to T. That means we can say that the Laplace transform of this x of t is equal to omega divided by s square plus omega square times 1 minus e to the power minus ts. And apart from that, we will also have this exponential term. And that is the Laplace transform of this half wave rectifier function. And suppose if you want to represent the same function in terms of the omega, then that also we can do that. So as you know, this omega is equal to 2 pi divided by t. So we can say that this t is equal to 2 pi divided by omega. And similarly, this t by 2 is equal to pi divided by omega. So that is the Laplace transform of this half wave rectifier function. So similarly, now let us see how to find the Laplace transform of the full wave rectifier function. So once again, we will follow the same procedure. That means we will find the Laplace transform of the function which is represented over the first cycle. So once again, this function is equivalent to the summation of the two sinusoidal signals. So as you can see, this x of t is the sinusoidal signal and this x of t minus t by 2 is the time shifted version of the sinusoidal signal. So once again, 
if you do the addition of these two signals then apart from the first cycle all the half cycles will get eliminated and eventually you will get this first cycle that means once again the mathematical equation of the x1t will remain the same but in case of this full wave rectifier now the time period t dash is equal to t by 2 so mathematically if we see this x1 of t then once again that is equal to sin omega t plus sin omega t minus t by 2 and like i said earlier here this unit step function indicates that this sinusoidal signal exists only for the t greater than or equal to 0 so now let us find the laplace transform of this x1 of t so as we know the laplace transform of the sin omega t is equal to omega divided by square plus omega square and using the time shifting property we can also find the laplace transform of the second function so since this sinusoidal signal is time shifted by the time period t by 2 so here we will have this exponential term that is e to the power minus t by 2 times s so here in both the terms this omega divided by square plus omega square is common so if we take it outside then we can write it as 1 plus e to the power minus t by 2 times s so that is the laplace transform of the function x1t so once we get the laplace transform of this x1 of s then we simply need to divide it by this exponential term and by doing so we will get the laplace transform of the periodic function so in this exponential term this t dash is the time period of this periodic function or in this case that is the time period of this full wave rectifier so like i said for the full wave rectifier this time period t dash is equal to t by 2 because this signal is repeating itself after the t by 2 time period so in this expression we can write it as this x1 of s divided by 1 minus e to the power minus t by 2 times s and further it is possible to represent this time period in terms of the omega so as we know this omega is equal to 2 by divided by t that means the t is equal to 2 pi divided by omega and this t by 2 is equal to pi divided by omega so that is the laplace transform of this full wave rectifier so in this way if we just know the laplace transform of the first period of the periodic function then we can easily find the laplace transform of that periodic function so similarly now let us take the another example and let us see how to find the laplace transform of this sawtooth wave so here to find the laplace transform of this sawtooth wave first of all we need to laplace transform of the function which is represented over the first time period let's say that function is equal to x1 of t so first of all let us see how to represent this function x1t mathematically so as you can see up to 0 to 1 it is nothing but the ram function and at this point suddenly it becomes zero so to get that function first of all at this time location we need to subtract the same prime function so mathematically that is equal to r of t minus 1 hence since we are subtracting so its slope will be negative so now if we add these two functions then we will get this function that means up to 0 to 1 we will have a ram function and at this location if you see then the slope will become zero that means now the value of the function is equal to constant so here at this location since the value of the function is equal to 0 so somehow we also need to subtract this and we can do so by subtracting the unit step function at this location so mathematically that is equal to minus u of t minus 1 that means if we add these three functions then we will get this x1t so mathematically we can say that this x1t is equal to r of t minus r of t minus 1 minus u of t minus 1 where this r of t is a unit ram function and this t minus 1 indicates that it is the time shifted version so once we know the mathematical expression then we can easily find its laplace transform so in the earlier video we have seen that the laplace transform of the unit ram function is equal to 1 divided by s square and we know that the laplace transform of the unit step function is equal to 1 divided by s but here since it is a time shifted by a one unit so as per the time shifting property we will have this e to the power minus s divided by s similarly for this time shifted ram function we will have this e to the power minus s divided by s square and if we further simplify it 
then we can write it as this one divided by s square times this one minus e to the power minus s minus e to the power minus s divided by s. So that is the Laplace transform of this function x one t. And once we get that, then it is easy to find the Laplace transform of this sawtooth waveform. So as we have seen earlier, the Laplace transform of this periodic function is equal to the Laplace transform of the function x one s divided by one minus e to the power minus t dash times s. And in this exponential term, this t dash is the time period of the periodic function. So as you can see, for this sawtooth waveform, this time period is equal to one. That means in this case, this t dash is equal to one. So we can say that the Laplace transform of this sawtooth waveform is equal to the Laplace transform of this x one of s divided by one minus e to the power minus t dash times s. And this is the Laplace transform of the x one of s. And here. Since the t dash is equal to one, so further it can be written like this. So if we divide both the terms of the numerator by this exponential term, then further it can be written like this. So in case if required, then you can pause the video and you can verify the result by yourself. So that is the Laplace transform of the sawtooth waveform. So in this way, for any periodic signal, if we know its Laplace transform of the first period. Then we can easily find the Laplace transform of that periodic function. So similarly, in the next video we will see that how to find the inverse Laplace transform. So if you have any question or suggestion, then do let me know here in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe the channel for more such videos.